starting lineups. Let's go to PA announcer Jim Wilson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rutgers Athletic Center. Tonight, the Scarlet Knights host the Princeton Tigers. Here are the starting lineups. First, for Princeton, at the guards, number four, a 5'10 sophomore from Tom's River, Joe Scott. And number 30, a 6'3 freshman from Sellins Grove, Pennsylvania, Mike Harnum. At center, number 55, a 6'9 senior from Suffern, New York, Howard Levy. And at the forwards, number 24, a 6'6 sophomore from Pensacola, Florida, Alan Williams. And number 43, a 6'5 sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland, Aaron Belts. And now here are the Scarlet Knights. At the guards, number 10, a 6'2 senior from Washington, D.C., John Battle. Number 12, a 6'9 senior from Warren, Chris Renly. At center, number 34, a 6'9 sophomore from Clareton, Pennsylvania, Lloyd Moore. And at the forwards, number 44, a 6'8 senior from Goldsboro, North Carolina, Andre Bell. Number 54, a 6'6 senior from Woodbridge, Virginia, Steve Perry. All right, the officials for tonight's ball game, Jim Garvey, Jody Sylvester, David Pollock, Jim from Lido Beach, Long Island, Jody from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and David from Berwick. Pennsylvania. Bill Perry and Dick Lloyd at the Rutgers Athletic Center. And Dick, we should mention right off the top, this ball game will be played with a 45 second clock for the duration of the ball game. Atlantic 10 plays with a 45 second clock, this being Rutgers home court. Rutgers members of the Atlantic 10, so the 45 second clock will be in effect. However, Princeton opted not to accept the three point field goal. The lines are on the court, but no three point field goal. It's a distance of 19 9, but we will play with the clock. And I think that will be a factor, Bill, at the end of the basketball game. It's going to stop teams from just sitting on the ball. I don't think it's going to affect tempo. As we'll talk during the game, I have some statistics to show where a team can get as few as 40 shots with a 45 second clock. Other teams will get as many as 71. So it's going to be a factor near the end of the game. Big Lloyd Moore, the transfer from Marquette. Number 34 for Rutgers. We'll jump it up with Princeton's Howard Levy. Rutgers in white. The Tigers in black. Lloyd Moore, 6'9", 260 plus. And he has been very slow in coming around for Rutgers, but they do expect big things from him in the future. This is John Battle and Dick, as expected, Princeton settles in their zone. Well, this is interesting for Rutgers, too. Number one guard becomes John Battle. He's off with his first shot, and there is Lloyd Moore. And a foul. And the foul might be on number 30, Michael Harnum. And that's got to be great for Tom Young and for Rutgers and for Lloyd Moore for him to come into this game early and assert himself underneath and get that strong rebound. First on Harnum, he's the 6'2 freshman starting and playing for the first time this season. John Smith is on Pete Carroll's bench. Lloyd Moore, who played 20 minutes in the opener last Thursday night, and scored two points and had two rebounds in the 77-73 win over Ryder. Highly recruited ball player out of Clareton, Pennsylvania. A real fierce recruiting battle between Pittsburgh and Marquette. Moore wound up at Marquette, hurt a knee his freshman year, transferred to Rutgers, sat out last year, and Tom Young hopes he rounds into shape and is the ball player that everyone saw as a high school player when he was a high school All-American, but you just saw him as two free throws. The other thing about the Rutgers combination, we said John Battle at the point guard, Chris Remley, who's played forward ever since he's been here, moves out to a number two guard spot. We'll set the players as they touch. Number four is Joe Scott. 43 is Aaron Fells. Number 30 is Harnum. 
Here, 24 is Allen Williams. Inside, it's Levy, 55. All the Tigers have touched. That's Levy with it. And the Tigers bring it back out with still 18 seconds on the shot clock. So you see, they're deliberate, but 45 seconds is a lot of time, and they still have lots of time. Levy gets it back outside. Open is Bells, and it is rejected by Steve Perry. Bells is going to have to be much quicker on that release against the Rutgers team. Scott traveled before the shot. Basket will not count. It's a good call by the official there. He tried to step behind that screen. We are scoreless. We played one minute and 15 seconds. Steve Perry, number 54. Chris Remley, number 12. John Battle is 10. Lloyd Moore is 34. Andre Bell is 44. And that's Andre Bell moving baseline to baseline. Remley looking inside. Ball is loose. Moore goes up for it. And he steps out of bounds. Of course, early on offensively, Rutgers looking to get that ball inside. We talk about Rutgers being a veteran club, which have Lloyd Moore, who hasn't played for them before. Andre Bell having to move out to a forward spot. You've got Remley moving back to a number two Scott, uh, guard spot. And John Battle playing the number one guard spot. Joe Scott. And Alan Williams, sophomore from Pensacola, Florida. Scott's out of Tom's River. Played for Tom's River East. Had 14 Saturday in the loss against Delaware when the Tigers blew that large lead. Williams didn't play a lot last year, but I think Pete likes him for his rebounding. He's a great leaper. Still 20 on the shot clock. Plenty of time for the deliberate Tigers. Bell's out for Scott. Remember in that game last year for Princeton, Howie Levy was a big factor inside. Scored 20 points last year. Levy too far for Allen Williams. Hey, we've played two minutes and eight seconds, and we have a shutout going. John Battle, All-American candidate, 6'2", senior guard from Washington, D.C. With the injury to Brian Ellerby, Battle plays the point, but he's still a shooter. And right there, nothing but net from 17. We'll have to stop it to play as some streamers are thrown out onto the court. He's a great shooter. I mentioned earlier that I was never sure that he was a shooter, but after watching him last year, look at how strong he goes up. He's not what you call a pretty shooter, picture book shooter, but boy, a lot of shooters would like to be able to have those legs and get up that high. Very strong player. Compliments being thrown about by people like Blue Carn, a second Red Albeck saying things like he's a number one draft choice and he's a Dave Bing type. I think because of his physical ability, I would agree with that. A very strong, aggressive player on offense. Not heavily recruited out of high school. He has really developed as a player at Rutgers in his four seasons. 2 nothing. Scarlet Knights lead it. Allen Williams ties it at two. He's a pretty good shooter, the sophomore. Coming in, he had hit nine of his 17 field goal attempts in two ball games. Rutgers turns it over, and here's Joe Scott. Tigers will not run unless they have the golden opportunity. Rutgers again with this group looking to get the ball inside. They tried to throw it inside the bell that time, and it got deflected. Michael Harnum. Bell's down low for Levy, and Harnum. Looked down, saw that three-foot line, thought better of it. Three-point line. Again, though, three-point goal not in effect tonight. Down low, Levy. Jump hook. Tell you what, Howard Levy with that field goal is now 9 of 9 from the floor. He had 3 of 3 from the floor in his first ball game and 5 of 5 in his second ball game. We can say that he is a high percentage shooter. Well, I, think, leads to I think he holds the record for Princeton at something like 65%, which is the best field goal record. Levy with the steal as Moore was looking for Steve Perry. A lot of people felt that Rutgers would blow Princeton away, but somehow that's been a feeling for a lot of years when these two teams get together, and somehow Princeton always manages to play Rutgers very tough. Of course, we are very early, but already some raised eyebrows as Princeton leads it 4-2, to two, and the Tigers with possession. And Harnum, strange-looking Jay, and it's off the backboard. Andre Bell to Perry up ahead for battle. Strange-looking, but he had 50 points in high school last year in one game. He's out of Sellingsgrove, Pennsylvania. A little bit of a leaner on it, Dick. And his dad is the head basketball coach at Susquehanna University, and prior to that, he was the head coach at the University of Delaware. Perry goes to battle. That's a 19-9 nine 
long jumper. He was right at that three-point line. Battle has four points. We are tied at four. And that was nice. I think John has that spot marked on the floor. That's the same spot he took that jumper from before. It was a nice cross-court pass from the corner over top of that zone. Bell's back for Harnum. Harnum has it back from Scott. Allen Williams. And he traveled. Allen Williams, only senior on the floor for the Tigers, is Howard Levy. So it's a young club, and Pete Carrill has said it. This could be his toughest assignment yet. But he's got a history of pulling him out of the woodwork with Howie Levy, who was nothing as in his sophomore year, came on last year to have a great year. Kevin Mullen, the same thing. Have you ever heard of Kevin Mullen when he was a junior? Great senior year. Perry baseline, little long. Ball batted to Harnum. You know, Mullen was a fourth-round draft choice of the Boston Celtics and lasted very long in preseason camp. And playing in Switzerland, I understand, doing very well. Levy. More plays and Scott from deep. Well, it's interesting. You talk about Princeton's patience and how they work, but they have to have good jump shooters because they wind up taking long jump shots. That's why Tom, Tom Young was a little surprised that Pete Carrell opted not to go with the three-point field goal because Tom felt that Princeton has some guys that work for a shot yet take a 20-foot jumper. And there's battle, and this would be from three. And that's probably why. Maybe he had a scouting report. But I agree, too. I looked at the statistics two years ago when Princeton did play the three-point and the shot clock. Princeton attempted nine three-pointers. Rutgers only one. Well, you saw Battle calling out the defense. It is John Battle six and Princeton six. 13 minutes and 40 seconds left. First half, Bill Perry and Dick Lloyd at the Rutgers Athletic Center. Scott will try again. Shooting with confidence. Joe Scott, 5'10", sophomore, out of Tom's River. Started out, he hit one of five against Franklin and Marshall last Monday night. Came back at seven of 11 for 14 points against Delaware. He was a shooter in high school. And he has shown some confidence this evening, getting two from deep. It is 8-6, Tigers. Battle is open over Levy as he jumps out at him. What did Dick Lloyd say about wasn't sure the battle was a shooter? Remember, that was a year ago. I was convinced before the season started. He's averaging about 49%. Pete Carrill lost his chair as he kicked it over. He needs that zone to be a little more active, getting out at battle. Princeton, meanwhile, shooting well. That is Aaron Bells, sophomore from Silver Springs, Maryland. His first points. It is 10-8. 12.45 left. So the early tension, and remember we played over two minutes without either team scoring, and suddenly both teams were red hot and play it the same way. And there is Tom Young, who is now the winningest coach in Rutgers history. He coached his 224th win this past Thursday night in the Open. Of Frank Hill had 223 wins, coaching from 1915 to 1943 at the State University. So our congratulations to Tom Young, who is now in his 12th season being hounded by Scott. Important point for Princeton here in this defense. They cannot allow Rutgers a second shot. Rutgers is consistently going inside. Out the basket. Lloyd Moore becomes the first Rutgers player other than John Battle to score. Watch big Lloyd Moore establish his position down low. And he'll get the basket plus the foul. The ball come to Perry, and he's actually coming over because Bell was low also. So he had two guys in there, and Princeton couldn't defend that. He took it up nicely to the glass. Second foul on Harnum, the freshman, and number 41, John Smith, has reported in for the Tigers. Harnum goes to the bench. Moore missed his two free throws earlier this evening. He will look to break the 10-all tie. And he's 0-3. So John Smith, who has been bothered with the flu, missed a practice this past Sunday, day after Princeton blew that lead and lost to Delaware. But there's John with the ball, a shooter out of Stanford, Connecticut, a 6'3 junior. Williams for Smith. thing with Rutgers foul shooting they shot 84 percent their first game and last year they had a little trouble from the line they were shot 67 percent and Princeton has not been getting to the foul line in their first two ball games Howard Levy with his first miss of the season and that is not his range and John Battle with a great rebound taking it all the way down spinning but missing and more with the follow 
There's Lloyd Moore, and that's what we said going in. Princeton cannot afford to give him those rebounds on their defensive board, and Rutgers is working that ball inside. Lloyd Moore doing a nice job of hitting the boards hard. 12-10 Rutgers, 11-15 left. Smith trying to move around Perry. Whips it back out for Scott. Bells back to Joe Scott. Smith swings it for Allen Williams. Down low, Levy. Andre Bell knocked it out of bounds off Levy. Nice defensive play by Bell. Bill, I think you'll probably consistently find that Princeton does not go to the line a lot because they do a lot of perimeter shooting on the outside. Only really have Howie Levy to get it inside to. Shot 11 free throws total in their two ball games. And Dick, as you mentioned, Rutgers got 25 in their opener. Scarlet Knights looking to take a four-point lead. If they can do so, it will be their largest lead. And we get our first substitution for Rutgers. Number 14, Steve Brown comes in, and Lloyd Moore gets a hand. And he was treated harshly by the crowd last Thursday night. But Lloyd Moore gets a hand as he leaves. And now what Rutgers will do is battle moves to the two guard. And Steve Brown, number 14, is your handling guard. And Remley, who started as big guard, swings up front to the forward position. And this really changes the complexion of the team. This is a much faster and quicker team with just that one substitution. It'll be interesting to see how they react against this zone. Remley's more comfortable up front. He is not a good ball handler. He is a shooter, and he puts the Scarlet Knights up by four. I think he likes that corner position. Important for him to hit from the outside for Rutgers so that they have a consistent outside threat. First four-point lead of the ball game. We approach the midway mark first half. Rutgers 14, Princeton 10. Tigers have scored six straight points. We have a timeout with 10 minutes and three seconds left in the first half. Rutgers leads it 14-10. We'll be back after this. A box of chocolate sweets with bitter aftertaste starts a search for a killer on mystery. Those chocolates contained arsenic. Rose is all I've got in the world. I'd do everything for her. Even murder. The wicked shall perish. The fire of the Lord shall consume to me! Agatha Christie's Partners in Crime on Mystery. Enjoy Mystery Friday at 9 here on New Jersey Network. Bill Perry and Dick Lloyd at the Rutgers Athletic Center. John Battle. And then Lloyd Moore with the follow. Battle with the rare miss. Lloyd Moore following it up. Dick Lloyd is now on the bench. Playing well in the first 10 minutes of this first half. We are at the midway point. It is 14-10 Rutgers. Rutgers changed their defense during that timeout. They were playing before what they call their soft, soft man. They don't put a lot of pressure on. Now they're playing their matchup. Four seconds on the shot clock, and I don't think Princeton is aware of it. The ball is knocked out of bounds. They would not have gotten the shot off. Tigers were not aware of the shot clock situation. Turns out they turned it over anyway. So here's Rutgers, Scarlet Knights, with a run of six straight points. Princeton hasn't scored in the last three and a half minutes. Perry, nice move. Nice pass, and Perry in the air in one motion with his first field goal. And that was nice because Steve Brown cut down the center and made a screen on Perry's man there that was guarding him in the zone. Very nice play, and again, Rutgers being consistent, looking inside that zone. For the Tigers, this is the first crucial point of the ball game. Rutgers has made a run of eight straight points. Princeton finds themselves trailing by six. And they need a field goal. They've gone now four minutes without a point. John Smith blocked by battle. Clean rejection. Seven on the shot clock. Two on the shot clock. Smith forces. And the foul on battle. And Tom Young exploded off his bench. He's not happy with John Battle because John should have been aware that the Tigers had to force a shot. And Smith forced a shot for sure. And the foul was committed by John Battle. And that was two times in a row. The last two times that Princeton has had trouble with that shot clock getting a good shot off. Rutgers switched back their defense. They switched back to man-to-man. -to -man. 
Tom takes Battle out of there. He's going to talk it over with him. And Darren Campbell, number 30, a 6'5 stop from Washington, D.C., checks in. John Smith. He will shoot two. John's a good free throw shooter. He's only been to the line. Now that was his third free throw of the season. And he's two of four for the season, making one of two on this trip. 16-11. waiting to come right back in. Tom wanted to get him out and tell him about that defensive blunder. He's going to send him right back in the ballgame. Hell from Remley. Baseline, little long, and Brown's over the top of Joe Scott. Steve Brown is not happy about it. Six-foot sophomore from Trenton and McCarston High School. Remley will sit down as battle comes back. Remley leaves with a field goal for two. Steve Brown, of course, didn't get a lot of playing time last year, but against Ryder, he got himself 11 points, played a good game. Tough on defense, makes that club a little bit quicker. In 28 minutes, he also had seven assists. John Thompson, number 22, has checked in for Princeton. John Thompson. Now. Dick Lloyd, where have we all heard that name before? There you go again. <laughs> John appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated with Patrick Ewing and some other guy a couple of weeks ago. John, of course, the coach at Georgetown National Champs, his son, number 22. John Thompson playing for the Princeton Tigers out of Washington, D.C., of course. Must be something to that. Two college coaches, Don Harnum and Susquehanna, John Thompson at uh, Georgetown sent their sons to play for Pete Perrill. I've just been told who that other guy was. That was President Reagan. <laughs> 7.35 left first half. It is 16-11. Rutgers turns it over. Scott from Bells. Williams went to the Princeton bench. This is Thompson, 6'4", freshman. Bell's got off to a great start his freshman year and then had stress fractures. Both of his feet missed most of the season. Lloyd Moore waiting to come back for the Scarlet Knights. Campbell on Thompson. Smith, top of the circle, a little long. Steve Perry played the game of his life against Ryder last week with 10 rebounds, 17 points. Five steals played all 40 minutes. South Fog, Darren Campbell won't go. Levy with the long rebound. Pete Carell. Two straight Ivy League championships. 310 wins in Tigertown. Never a losing season. He's in his 18th year. The inimitable one. Two NIT appearances, six NCAA, an NIT champ in 75. They call him the Colombo of the coaching ranks. But he's one of the best. 16-11 Rutgers. Scott will not go. Ball batted out, and Scott will retrieve it. Rutgers back to their switching defense now, like a matchup. Try to keep the guards outside, the big guys inside. Bells over Perry with a high archer. He had to go way over him, almost forced it. and I believe the foul on Bells as Steve Brown went inside for Bell. I was worried about having to say that. Bells against Bell. And Bell sits down for Rutgers. And wouldn't you know it, Bells sits down for Princeton. Remley now is going to come back. Lloyd Moore has already come back in for the Scarlet Knights. Campbell leaves. So you got Perry, Remley, and Moore up front for Rutgers with Brown and Battle in the backcourt. Scott Smith, Thompson, Williams and Levy on the floor for the Tigers. This gives you some idea of the depth that Rutgers has. Remley off the out of bounds from Brown off glass. Chris Remley, his second field goal. He has four. Tom Young can have four players that cannot play, and three of them contributors last year to that team that won eight out of their last nine, and yet he can still bring some substitutes in off the bench, and it doesn't affect the team that much. Largest lead for the Scarlet Knights. Tom says if there's a bright side to all this, players who normally would not be getting experience will have experience once the league portion of the schedule begins in January. But without Ellerby, Zucker, and Riggins, Scarlet Knights are very thin. Tom is dressing two players who he hopes to redshirt this year. 
and Mark Peterson and Mike Brown, two big sophomores, both 6'9", 6'10". Shot is missed by Scott. Talking about big Lloyd Moore with the boards, and here's Steve Brown. Pete Carrill surveying the situation, not happy. His ball club down by seven. Battle open. Rutgers looking to run, and when they don't have the layup, they're still looking to get that good, quick shot. It was a 10-10 ball game at the 12-19 mark, a 10-1 Rutgers run over the last seven minutes plus. Big difference, of course, is Princeton just really doesn't have anybody to go inside to other than Howie Levy. You need more than one player. They've had to rely on perimeter shooting, and most of the time, just when that 45-second clock was running down. Four and a half left, first half. Williams cross court for Smith from way outside, and that's short, rolled off the front rim and out. Got a foul on John Thompson, running shoulder to shoulder with Steve Brown. Tom Young will go back to his bench, Darren Campbell for Steve Perry. Steve Perry, who played the whole 40 against Ryder, gets a hand. Outstanding student, a Rhodes Scholar candidate, a management journalism major. Great average up in the B plus A minus range. And a really nice young man, Steve Perry. Steve Brown for battle. Darren Campbell to South Carter Remley. Chris over leaving. And Chris Remley is having a night. 22 11. for Scott. This is Thompson. Pass thrown away by Thompson. Looking inside for Williams. Brown, a little too far for battle. Athletic ability to save it. And he throws it up over the top and out of bounds. He did have to hustle and save that one. He figured it was about the only thing he could do is take a shot at it. Andre Bell back in for the Scarlet Knights. brought Aaron Bell back in for Allen Williams. So it's Scott and Smith in the backcourt for the Tigers with Thompson, Bells, and Levy up front. 22-11 Rutgers. Princeton has scored one point, a free throw by Smith, in the last nine minutes. And if we look at the uh, shot chart for the first half, pass from Smith into Levy. Basket will not count. The foul is going to be on Steve Brown. Dave Pollock with the call. What I was going to say, if we look at that shot chart, you're going to find out almost all those shots taken from close to that three-point range have not been able to get that ball inside. Second foul on Steve Brown, just the third. Team foul on Rutgers. Smith from three-point range. from outside the three-point area. And the foul is on John Thompson over the back of Andre Bell. Thompson, a real good high school player, but called a tweener at 6'4", played forward in college. And it was felt that he was not big enough or physical enough to play forward among the high-powered schools and did not handle it well enough at 6'4", to play big guard. And while he did have some good credentials, he was not all that heavily recruited. Could have gone to some major schools, but opted for the Princeton Tigers, where he will get a basketball education plus an education. Pass inside for Remley. Chris didn't see it coming from Steve Brown. Here's Joe Scott. And as I mentioned earlier, Tigers will only run if they are solo, if they are wide open. 2.22 left. Thompson from outside. Nails it. That time, Bell splashed into that high post. Looks like Princeton may be looking to work a little more inside now. 22-13, first field goal for Princeton. Since the 12-53 mark, they went over 10 minutes without a field goal. What they did down in Delaware, I think, outscored. South team to run about the last seven minutes. Let it 47-35, Rutgers turns it over. Princeton led it 47-35 with 7.51 left. Got outscored 16-1 over the final 7.51 and lost. And you had nerve.
reserve enough to show up at Princeton's practice Sunday. <laughs> Imagine Pete wasn't too happy. If you've never seen a Princeton practice, it's a real treat. Just watch the uh, coach at work. 22-13. Here's Levy back out for Thompson. Trying to move baseline around Campbell. It's it back out for Aaron Bell. Scott is open. He will hit that shot. Well, not that time. Rebound to Smith. Another shot taken from three-point range. And that's the type of shot they'll work for, and they have the good open perimeter shooters. Levy trying to move on Bell. We got Bell 44, and Princeton's 43 is Bell's B-E-L-Z. Minute left. 25 on the shot clock as the Rutgers partisan starts the boring chance. Gets a couple of defenders in the air, got battle, and Campbell out of there and hit it off glass. Went up strong, and I was surprised to see him go off the glass at that angle. Pretty move by John Thompson. Four straight points for Princeton to get back to seven down, 22-15. Got a seven-second difference shot clock to game clock. So Rutgers will run it down and then force Princeton to hurry up. Of course, that is something Princeton does not do all that well, hurry up. Rutgers will be at the Meadowlands Sunday against St. John's. Ball is stripped by John Smith, part of a New Jersey, New York triple header at the Meadowlands Arena. At 4 o'clock, it's Rutgers and St. John's. Other games, Monmouth against St. Francis at noon, and it's LIU and FDU at 2 p.m. That is this Sunday at the Meadowlands, a New York, New Jersey triple header. And the feature game at 4 o'clock, Rutgers and St. John's tickets are available at the Meadowlands and you can charge a seat at 201-935-3900. Scarlet Knights and the Redmen featured game at the Meadowlands coming up this Sunday afternoon. 201-935-3900. Tickets are available at the Meadowlands for that college basketball triple header Sunday. Coach Young moving back to his coaching box. Yes. <laughs> Get a chance, second half, we'll tell you more about that. You see the stripe right in front of Pete Carrell. Pete cannot go any closer to midcourt. That's a technical foul right now. He's got a foot outside that coaching box line, okay? He, he's straddling That's the That's a rule that has to go. Battle way outside, long, tip in, no good, and there's the horn. So we are at halftime. It is 22 to 15. Rutgers leading Princeton. We have a full halftime plan for you. I know you will enjoy it. Individually, the scoring, John Battle leads Rutgers with eight points. And for Princeton, four apiece for John Thompson and Joe Scott. We hope to have a word with Lafayette coach Butch Van Bredikoff, Alan Andrews from the Rutgers football team named third team AP All-American earlier today. Congratulations to Allen. He'll be with us later at halftime. But we started out with conversations earlier with Tom Young and Pete Carrill. I had the opportunity to talk with both head coaches. Pete Carrill about his uh, state of mind, if you will. Pete's always fascinating to talk to. And Rutgers has a fascinating situation regarding recruiting. So we will pick it up with my conversation with Tom Young, and I'll tell you a little bit about the Rutgers recruiting situation. Tom Young is now in his 12th season at Rutgers, and as we mentioned earlier, Tom is the winningest coach ever at the State University. Interesting situation, however, this year. Rutgers does not have any freshmen on the roster. Seems in alternate years, Tom brings in a great number of players. Then the next year, no players. It is a rather odd recruiting situation. Already for next year, Rutgers has signed three players, three early signees. Miles Dixon out of St. Anthony's in Jersey City, a guard, and Ricky Datica, a six-foot guard from Elmwood Park. Two players from the state who will be freshmen at Rutgers next year, and a player from Washington, D.C., Anthony Duckett, 6'6", six, six, also signed. But why, Tom, no freshmen this year? It's not something that we really want. I don't think any coach wants that, but uh, let's go back to Roy Henson's freshman year. Uh, we signed uh, Jeff Allen, who later goes to St. John's. We signed Jeff in uh, April. Then Roy, he decides to come in uh, May. We can't turn Henson down. He's too good. He's too, too uh, potentially too great a player. So all of a sudden, instead of having five kids, you have six. Now we'll go back 
two years ago with these guys that are now sophomores and all of a sudden we have four or five good players and one or two more want to come in so uh, a team which should have received the bowl bid but did not but congratulations on a great season to Rutgers and congratulations to Alan Andrews who was named to the Associated Press third team All-American team the tight end had an outstanding season congratulations and the first question I have to ask you is what about a uh, future in pro football you're interested in pro football uh, thank you very much uh, hopefully there's a future uh, I've talked to a few teams uh, from Dallas to Denver a few other places and it's all real exciting, and it just takes a little time, and I just have to wait and see what happens. The fact that the team did not get a ball bid and you were a senior had to be very disappointing to you. It was especially being a senior, and you know, to all our seniors, it was very disappointing. But um, that's NCAA football, so. You separated a shoulder in the win over West Virginia 23-19 on November 10th, so missed the last game against Colgate. Is there any possibility of you playing in any of the postseason All-Star games? If I get an invitation, yes. I'm healthy again, and um, I started lifting a couple days ago, so I'm back to normal, full strength in my arms the shoulders, so if the opportunity comes, I'll be ready. All right, Alan, let's take a look at you in action against West Virginia on November 10th, and uh, on a third and five in the first quarter, this play will pick up eight yards from Rusty Hochberg, and for the day, you had two catches for 61 yards for the season, 40 catches, 511 yards, and two touchdowns, 6'5", 230 out of Sucka, Sunna, New Jersey, and Roxbury High School, and uh, unfortunately, on the second catch in this ball game was your long of the year 53 that's the play and we can see it here that's the play where you got injured yeah it was, i got tackled by like four or five guys at once and when i came down i came down on my shoulder hard onto the turf and uh, it's, it was a second degree, second degree separation but um, like i said i'm healthy again the thing was here you, people were impressed with your speed as you were able to uh run away from the defenders before being caught and we'll see it again on replay and this is what forced Allen to miss the season finale against West Virginia but in all the uh, eight games and really seven and a half games in the 40 catches and Andrew Baker led the Scarlet Knights in receptions 42 catches and of course Andrew played the entire season so you had an outstanding season well the first thing I asked after I got inside and they were looking at my shoulder did I get caught from behind so <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of fun all right Allen Andrews from the Rutgers football team and while you will be departing the Rutgers scene what do you see in the future for Rutgers football? Well Rutgers football has got a great future ahead. Uh, we're getting a lot of kids coming back and uh, with a good season the recruiting should be fantastic. So. You're going to help? Oh yeah without a doubt. All right. I'm an alumni now I have to. You know of course you didn't mention it but the New Jersey Generals have rights to Rutgers players in the USFL draft. Any thoughts of uh, going to the Generals and staying in New Jersey? Well that's a, that's a decision that I haven't really thought about yet, but um, when the time comes, I'll make it. Okay, Alan Andrews, thank you so much for Thanks being with us. Again, congratulations on that All-American mention today. Thanks All right, earlier this evening here at the Rutgers Athletic Center, there was an alumni game, Princeton and Rutgers alums, some blast from the past coming back, and among those players who came back was Bob Lloyd. I've heard the name before. Of course, it's been my pleasure to work with Dick Lloyd the last two seasons, and Bob Lloyd is now joining us here at halftime. And in that game, Princeton won it 51 to 49. Bob Lloyd, a 1967 All-American at Rutgers, played in the backcourt with Jim Valvano. Bob averaged 26.5 points per game. The all-time Rutgers leader, Phil Sellers, in four years, the only player to score more total points than Bob. Bob, of course, only played three years. This man's one of the great free throw shooters of all time, shooting almost 90%, .898 for his career. And uh, Bob, just update the folks. What are you doing now? I'm the president of an electronics company in Santa Clara, California now. All right. I couldn't get them to foul me out there tonight, though. <laughs> that was the biggest problem. How did it feel suiting up again? It was fun. I play in a league now, and uh, it was good to get out there. It was good to see the guys. I hadn't seen a lot of the players in probably 10, 15 years. So Keep in touch at all with Jimmy V? Well, in fact, my wife and I are going uh, from here tomorrow to go down and stay with Jim and Pam and see him play tomorrow night. They've been to our house many times, and we keep saying we're going to come down, and so we're finally going to do it. I remember you from your days in the ABA with the old Nets when they used to play out on Long Island. The red, white, and blue ball. That's what everybody talks about. Yes. All right, Bob Lloyd, good to see you. And, uh, of course, one of his other credits is the fact that this man's brother, Dick, just last week, named to the uh, Hall of Fame at Bloomberg, where Dick Lloyd is college ball. My congratulations to my broadcast partner, Dick Lloyd. Bob Lloyd, good to see you. Thank I'm you. going to throw it right back up to your brother, and he's going to tell the folks about the first half. You better say something nice, though. Okay. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you, Bill Perry. And uh, that other guy, what was his name? I only remember the last name, other than the fact he came from a great family. All right, looking at those stats from the first half, one of the big factors, of course, that shooting percentage. Princeton, 7 out of 18. That's 38.9%. Free throws, neither team going to the line. Rutgers, of course, not making any of them. Lloyd Moore having a little trouble at that line. Fouls, not a factor yet. Turnovers seem to be equal. Story of that first half, then, seems to be Princeton's inability to hit those outside shots and not working to get that ball inside. It's not unusual for a Princeton team, although I think we'll see them come out a little bit the second half and perhaps go with more high-low post in there so that they've got two players inside instead of four in the perimeter, and Howie Levy will have some help. Rutgers will have to maintain its intensity, be strong on the offensive boards, which is very important. Rebounding statistic, 14 for Rutgers, 9 for Princeton, so that's a very important factor. We have to look at that score, too, and realize it's only a 7-point difference. Interesting to look at a 45-second clock, and yet we had a total of 18 shots. Uh, by Princeton, 19 by Rutgers. So the shot is not going to necessarily change tempo. Uh, the Ryder game, Rutgers had 51 shots. Ryder was able to get 71 shots. So if a team is playing enough tempo, even with that shot clock, they can get move that tempo up. And conversely, a team like Princeton wants to slow it down a little bit, they can still slow it down. 45 seconds, a long time. back with Dick Lloyd. This is almost as much fun as if I was working with Ernie Banks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Final 20 minutes of basketball. John Thompson starting the second half for Princeton. And here's John. Short, partially blocked, and uh, that's not a smart play. Rutgers may have gotten away with the travel there as Bell battled battle. How's that for the ball? Very good. Well, Bell's watched. All right, it's Remley and Battle, Perry, Bell, and Moore for the Scarlet Knights. Both teams, interestingly enough, have three starters on the floor that started that Princeton game last year. Levy, Bells, Smith for Princeton. Battle, Renly, and Bell for Rutgers. Chris Remley. Chris Remley having a great game. He has eight on four field goals. Four of four from the floor. Chris Remley. And that can strengthen Rutgers' team if he can get consistent from the outside, given that consistent outside threat to go with John Battle and the big guys inside. Joe Scott. He shot well in the first half. He now has six. His third field goal. Remley has it batted away by Levy, and the foul is on. Howard Levy, the 6'9", senior from Suffern, New York. Bill Rutgers does that well. They break after a made basket or a made foul shot and really bring that ball down the sideline into the corner very quickly. You can't go to sleep on them, or they'll get an easy two. for Remley inside. Nice pass for Bell. Count the basket and the foul will be on number 43, Aaron Bell. And Rutgers, as they did the first half, looking to get that ball inside. It came from the opposite corner over to the shoulder, and while that zone was adjusting, it was split for a second. They dropped that ball inside to Bell. First points for Andre Bell. 6'8", senior from Goldsboro, North Carolina. Tom Young very high on him. We have a lane violation on Levy. So Bell is going to get another chance. Levy lost his balance there, stepped into the line. You can't step in until the ball leaves the shooter's hand. As I was saying, Tom Young very high on Bell. And you pronounce it Andre Bell. Misses the free throws. 
John Battle battling for that rebounding position, swung all the way around, tried to get along the baseline. Smith did a nice job of blocking him out. So Alan Williams and Michael Harnum, two first half starters for Princeton, not starting the second half. Thompson and Smith on. Nice move, but the basket will not go. The foul is on Perry, and Aaron Bells will go to the free throw line. That time, Princeton got the ball inside. Bells made a nice cut, wide open inside, gave a nice little pump fake inside. Danger of doing that is that little pitter-patter in the walking that you'll do sometimes. You know, we mentioned the coaching boxes late in the first half, and technically, right now, Pete Carroll is guilty of a technical foul because he is sitting outside the coaching box by a hair. Now, if he crosses that leg, he's really outside that box. And that's a rule that a lot of coaches have complained about already. The rule is so that coaches cannot go after the officials near the midcourt area. You see it now? And uh, technically, it's a technical foul. Bell hits the second. And two shots. Joe Boylan was telling me in the first game, the official came over and told him to move his chair because he was straddling the line. That may be taking it a bit too far. Yeah, I was, I was at that first game against Franklin and Marshall. He was more than straddling it. The whole chair was just outside the line. But, of course, the idea of the rule is to keep the coaches going from getting as Remley hits again, getting after the officials near the midcourt strike and stalking them along the sidelines. Meanwhile, Remley is 5 of 5. He has 10 points. Warren, New Jersey, and Wachung Hills High School. Chris Remley, a 6'9 senior. 5 of 5, and that's helping Rutgers. That first half, they shot almost 58% from the field. Good shooting. Remley, 4 of 7 for 10 points. Had two free throws in the first ball game, and he's got 10 right here. Average 9.6 last year as a junior. John Thompson moving inside with Howie Levy low. 28-18, Rutgers on top. Bell, and he traveled. Lost his balance when he came down. You were talking about Tom Young being very high on Bell, and he said the same thing to me. He thought he was one of the most improved players over the summer. Zucker and Ellerby come back in two to three weeks apiece. Princeton turns it over, and if Riggins gets back from the academic problems, eligible after December 22nd, Rutgers will suddenly be a deep ball club. Talk about depth. You're not kidding. The time can play a lot of different combinations. Tough shot. Levy leaped out. Scott's running. Intimidated him a little bit. Great defense by Steve Perry. Battle. Dishes to Moore. And he is hammered by John Thompson. Perry gets that. Intimidates down the other end. Good outlet. Battle's going to take it in. Looking to the left side. And then he dishes it off to the right. Moore is going up off his strong. Lost the handle. Might have walked. Big fella may very definitely have gotten away with a travel. Lloyd Moore, 0 of 3 from the free throw line this evening. He has a total of four points. He will shoot two. Third foul on John Thompson. Got that one. That's tough. He was backing away from that line because that gets tough when you miss three like that. Begin to think about it too much. Tom Young giving him words of encouragement. This is the second and Scott with the long rebound. One might want to say Lloyd so much more. He's a big fella. That's what I say about different combinations with him in there. It gives them some real size inside, which they don't have. Slows them down a little bit, but there'll be times when that kind of team will be very effective. Smith, it'll drop. That is a shooter's touch. John Smith, his first field goal, he has three. The repeat broadcast of New Jersey Nightly News will be coming up after tonight's ball game. Program normally seen at 10 o'clock. Got a foul on Levy. Interesting, Moore on the outside and Bell working inside, fighting for that good position. Moore kept looking inside. That'll be a non-shooting foul, number two on Levy. Already the fourth team foul on Princeton. Rutgers with just one team foul. 
Grimley will trigger. Perry rolls out. Princeton bring it outside, set it up. Back there, all the way out in the midcourt area. Bell, 43. Pass deflected by Bell. Levy with it. Still 20 on the shot clock. As Princeton brings it back out. Pass whipped inside. The foul's on Bell. Thompson, that was a nice pass for Howard Levy. That well, was a nice backdoor cut. Lloyd Moore was doing a nice job of pressuring. Was in that denial position. Did not quite see the ball. You see that denial? He's got that hand up, but he just did not see that backdoor cut. Bell came over to help out and made that foul. And Tom's going to tell him about having his head turned away from the ball as he goes to the bench. Steve Brown, number 14, the sophomore out of Trenton and McCarston High School coming in. Princeton does that well. Their big guys make those V cuts, those backdoor cuts awfully well. So is it Remley? I read a quote in one of the area papers saying, I hate playing these guys. It's a fundamental use of that. Smith wide open from 19 feet. That's got to please Pete Carrill to see that kind of outside scoring His from John Smith. His second straight field goal, Dick, from the outside. He now has five. And if John Smith can get the hot hand, he can bring the Tigers right back in. They only trail by seven. 29-22, 14-15 to play. Second team all Ivy as a soft John Smith had a little trouble last year, shot about 43%. Needs to have a big year this year. Count the basket, Perry. And the foul may have been away from the ball. Let's wait and see. That's what it is. It's on Steve. Foul is on Andre Bell of. Rutgers getting into rebound position. The ball had left his hand, so count the basket. Third team foul against the Scarlet Knights, second on Bell. So Steve Perry now has four points. That was his second field goal, 31-22. Nice. Thompson to Smith to Levy, but rejected by Perry. Levy not close enough to the basket to take that shot. Had to go perhaps one more dribble. But Princeton trying to look inside a little bit now. Those offside players are going to flash inside. In fact, just before that, both Thompson and Smith ran into each other. Last three trips, though, they've created good scoring opportunities. The pass inside from Thompson, where Moore had turned his head. Smith got open, wide open for a shot. And that time, they moved the ball nicely with a three-man connection. And Levy was open down low. So the offense is starting to... Deliver the ball to the place where Pete Carrill wants to see it for the Princeton Tigers. Smith, not quite as open that time, contested by Battle. Ball is knocked out. Levy runs it down. He's hammered from behind by Battle, but no call. Reset the shot clock, and it's Scott open from the outside, and he's got it. Joe Scott has eight. His fourth field goal, 31-24. Seven-point lead. It was a seven-point game at the half. Rutgers up 22-15. We've been even in the first seven minutes of this second half. Here's Perry for Bell. Back out. Battle. Stops. Pops. And it drops. Boy, he's tough. He lands. He jumped up in the air to get that ball. Came down with a good, solid base. Went, looked the guy right in the face. Went right back up again. What a strong jump shot. His first points of the second half. John Battle has 12. What is surprising is that even though it's a zone, that John has not gotten himself to the free throw line yet because he can penetrate even against the zone. He does that very well, but Rutgers' attack has been to pass it around the perimeter and then dump it inside. Battle's the type of player who just like to get himself into the paint straight away just inside the free throw line, and he'll just go up in the air and hang and score. Along the baseline, John Thompson, he travels did that before it happens. That's the danger of that pump fake. And of course, one of the emphasis in the rules this year is walking. They want the officials really not to let the players get an advantage. And you do that pump a couple times, you have a tendency to just a little pitter-patter with those feet. Remley outside for battle. Steve Brown for Steve Perry. 
Whips it inside to Bell off his hands. I think Thompson from behind got a hand on it. Scott up ahead for Bell. Into the lane. It'll drop. With Aaron luck. Bell. Lucky on that one. He seemed to be off balance. Still got that shot off, and Princeton ran on that one. 33-26. Again, a seven-point ball game. And Pete Carrill now way outside that coach's box line. On one knee. with two players inside, Perry Bell. Remley swinging that baseline. In and out, Remley's miss, and it was Smith over Bell with the rebound. Tigers trying to close to within five. Bell's out for Thompson. Scott way outside. Still 20 seconds right here on the shot clock. That would have been three. Tom Young wants to talk it over with a timeout. 10 minutes and 33 seconds left. Make it 10.32 to play in the ballgame. 33-28 Rutgers over Princeton. Back after this. Next time on Smithsonian World, a look at things we treasure. Host David McCullough. We're not only going to look at some fascinating objects, but at plants and animals unique in the real sense of the word. Travel to Milan and witness the effort to save Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. What can we learn from tribal healers? And how late is it for some of the world's endangered species? Next time on Smithsonian World. That's Thursday, December 13th at 8 here on New Jersey Network. New Jersey Network, WNJB, Channel 58, New Brunswick, viewer and taxpayer supported public television. Bill Perry back at the Rutgers Athletic Center, upcoming Rutgers game. The Scarlet and the Lady Knights. Saturday, December 8th, doubleheaders coming up on Wednesday, December 12th. Lady Knights against Wagner, Rutgers men against Wagner, Saturday, December 15th. The Lady Knights against Villanova at 2, the men against American University at 4. Rutgers basketball for ticket information call 201-932-2766. Couple of doubleheaders here at the rack in the month of December. The Rutgers men also playing at the Meadowlands this Sunday against St. John's at 4. And later in the month in the holiday festival at Madison Square Garden playing Jimmy Valvano's North Carolina State Wolfpack, St. John's Old Dominion, the other half of that opening night doubleheader on December 27th. But the next game for Rutgers is this coming Sunday against St. John's at the Meadowlands at 4 o'clock. It's part of a New York New Jersey college basketball triple header at noon. Monmouth and St. Francis at 2. LIU and FDU. Then Rutgers and St. John's at 4. Ticket information at the Meadowlands, 201-935-3900. Andre Bell from the baseline with the field goal, and Rutgers leads it 35-28. to 28. Side Levy. Nice pass again from John Thompson. Levy's second field goal. He has four. 35, 30, 10 minutes left. You go to Pete Carrill's practice, you can see that play. Rutgers got it by 11 with 16.05 to play. 29-18. Now it's a five-point ball game. Battle trying to get Scott up in the air. Smith helping out on the double team. Remley shooting with confidence. Won't, it will go. Now did Perry tip it or is that Remley's basket? I believe it'll go to Remley. Let's wait and see. Basket to Chris Remley. Took a strange bound. Sure I don't did. think anyone did tip it, but it certainly when it hit that rim the first time, didn't look like it was going to go. Because if Perry got a hand on it, I felt the call would have had to be offensive interference. Remley kind of forced it and got the bounce. He has 12, and it's 37-30. Lloyd Moore waiting to come back in for the Scarlet Knights. Joe Scott, Aaron 
Bells. Here's Smith with eight on the shot clock. Bells down low for Levy. Back out, Smith three on the shot clock. Whips it down for Levy, and they turn it over. And here's Steve Brown. Third time, Dick, the shot clock has been a problem for Princeton in this ballgame. Battle. Nothing but athletic ability right there. Took two defenders and went up over them both. Got a little bit of penetration there, just like one dribble, and he went in. 14 for Battle. He leads all scorers. Thompson for Bell. 39-30. Down low, Levy. And counting. Now Princeton looking a little bit more consistently inside. Pete Carrill likes that, the ball going inside. Pete with Bill Carmody, one of his assistants standing, and the man seated is Brian Winters between Pete and Bill Carmody. Brian Winters, former NBA star with the Milwaukee Bucks for nine seasons. Now an assistant there is Brian with Pete Carrill. And, of course, on the Rutgers bench, Eddie Jordan is back with the Scarlet Knights as an assistant coach. Eddie, after a stint in the NBA with numerous clubs, back as an assistant for Tom Young. Howard Levy will try to complete the three-point play. Foul was on Perry. His second team fouls are all even at four apiece. Levy with five of his seven points here in the second half. It's a six-point Rutgers lead, 39-33. I'd like to see uh, Jordan and Winters go a little one-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. Maybe that's how they'll break the tie. who has 14 points on seven of seven from the field. He's yet to miss. Nicely done, too. They worked out right around the perimeter of that zone. In fact, Steve Brown got the ball up in the air, and before he came down, got it over to Perry, so he had plenty of time. He's playing extremely well. Remley and Battle have split 28 points. The remaining Scarlet Knights players have 13. Thompson for Levy. Moore jumps out at him. Way outside. Got it. Joe Scott, he's on fire. He has eight points in the second half, total of 12 on six field goals. We're going to watch Joey Scott the next couple of years. Only he could be, one of, huh? could be one of the best shooters that Pete has had at that number one guard spot for a while. The thing with him at the point at 5'10", he can't make the passes that Bill Ryan used to make at 6'4". 6'3", 6'4". 6,157 here at the rack. We hope you're enjoying it at home. John Battle's enjoying it from deep. And he's playing differently this year. Last year, he's a little bit more out of control. This time, he's playing with the team, taking the shots when he has it, not putting on the floor every time. Moore. Pump. Levy. And he made a no face. No foul call. Official couldn't see that face he made. He knew he bumped him there, and he made that grimace like, uh-oh. Princeton high low post there. Thompson in, Levy down. Now Levy's up, Thompson's down. Shot over battle. In and out. Tough miss. Remley with the rebound. Looking to run. The rebroadcast of this evening's New Jersey Nightly News will follow tonight's basketball game. We are at the Rutgers Athletic Center with six minutes and five seconds left. Rutgers leading Princeton, 43-35. Bill Perry and Dick Lloyd with you. College basketball right here on New Jersey Network. Remley. And he finally missed one. Battle runs down the rebound. Tries to pass it inside. Levy hustling back into the paint. Got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. John did a great job coming up with that ball. Went up and you could see in his eyes he saw the two guys open underneath. Just couldn't quite get it in there. Here's Remley from Steve Brown. He made up for that when he came back and said, Shucks, I missed one. I got to come back and start my streak again. So I Remley has 16 now, I believe it is, as does Battle. I think Rutgers has scored on two out of three of those end line out of bounds yeah, plays. Good on the out of bounds. Ten point lead again for the Scarlet Knights. Coach Young will get out of bounds coach of the year. <laughs> And trying to move against Perry. 15 on the shot clock. Thompson forcing, and the foul is on Levy as he contests 
Jason Lloyd more for the rebound. Good call. It's the old hand in the middle of the back trick. The right hand going up to get the rebound. The left hand in the middle of the player's back. Pete Carrell, 18th year in Tigertown, has never had a losing season. They won their opener, lost to Delaware. And Pete says this, well, I don't know if he says it, but he might feel that this could be the year that, uh, you know, they're going to be hard-pressed to have that winning year. Brown. Steve Brown, his first points. And it's the largest Rutgers lead, a 12-point lead at 47 to 35. And we have a timeout. College basketball upcoming at the Meadowlands arena. Princeton will be at the Meadowlands later this season, but this Sunday, an outstanding triple header at the Meadowlands. Rutgers and St. John's, the featured game at 4 o'clock. Starting at noon, Monmouth against St. Francis, where Bob Valvano, Jimmy's brother, is the head coach. St. Francis out of Brooklyn. Then LIU and FDU. And then comes the big one, Rutgers and St. John's. You can charge a seat by calling 201 935-3900 or right college basketball box 512 East Rutherford, New Jersey the Zippo 7073 and my personal thanks to the good people at the Meadowlands Laura Smith and Wes Unger Pete Carrell's teams nationally prominent defensively for oh just 15 of the 17 years about the schedule this year. Only nine games at Jadwin, the seven Ivy games and two other games. One of them already played against Franklin and Marshall. They played the fall at the Meadowlands Arena later in the season on January 29th. The ball, you know, they'll be one, two, three in the country. The polls around that time. That makes it tough when you have a young club, too. The more games you can get at home, the more confidence they're going to gain. St. John's nationally ranked in the top 10. DePaul nationally ranked in the top 10. Just two of the schools playing this season at the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford. Perry rejects John Thompson. Thompson back up and he draws the foul. The double team was there. Moore and Perry and the foul, I believe, is going to be against Lloyd Moore. Perry really is a solid defensive player. Watch number 54 work defensively. He does nice. He holds his ground there. You see he didn't go for that pump fake and then went up and got the block. Second pump fake. Moore got a piece of the hand. Just the first foul on Lloyd Moore. 15 foul on Rutgers. Both teams now with five team fouls. With the approaching bonus time. John Thompson makes the free throw. He now has five points. His first point of the second half. John Thompson at 6'4", having a little difficult time giving up some size trying to play down low inside. 47-37. Princeton switching their defense now, coming out a little bit more. Tom Young wants to talk it over with four minutes and eight seconds left with the 10-point lead. Interesting week for Rutgers, you know, having Princeton, the traditional rivals tonight, and then St. John's at the Meadowlands Sunday afternoon, top 10 ranked team, and you know that Rutgers would love to knock off Chris Small and Walt DeBerry and company, and if they do that, Rutgers could get some national recognition here on New Jersey Network after the first of the year. Have a happy new year, and then join us for college basketball. Montclair and William Patterson be actually on January 5th. That should read January 5th at 8 o'clock. Montclair William Patterson, January 12th. We will have LaSalle and St. Peter's. And then coming up in February on the second, Penn and Princeton. Three more games this season on New Jersey Network. And uh, we take you into Tom Young's up.
pressing kind of defense. Trying to trap the ball when it goes down the corner, not let it come back out. You know, Dick, in previous years when we talked about the various rules that college basketball was experimenting with, you knew that I was not an advocate of the shot clock and said that if they have a shot clock, at least leave it on for the entire ball game because you avoid the stall ball late. Here we are now, 4.05 left. The shot clock in previous years would have been turned off now, but it stays on, so Rutgers has the lead, but the shot clock will continue for the duration of the ball game. As we are now under four minutes left, play it the same way. Bells and Levy on the double team, knocking it out of bounds away from Steve Perry. Ten-point lead for Rutgers. Interesting press. The ball goes down the corner, and they'll just try to trap it so it can't come back out again. Battle. Perry gets baseline over Bells. It is short and little. 5'10", Joe Scott hustling back into the paint area with the rebound. Now, Princeton has to up-tempo it just a bit with 3.35 left, trailing by 10. Smith way off. Bells between three Rutgers players. Aaron Bells, the 6'5 sophomore, came away with it. You're right, Prince. Princeton can't afford to wait as long. they got to get that ball up what John's trying to do, and he is their shooter. That's who you want to put it up. He has seven free field goals here in the second half. He's been short on a few shots tonight, and again, he has been bothered with the flu. Did not start tonight. Came off the bench relatively early, and he's been there for the duration. Three minutes to play. Darren Campbell. His defense puts a little more pressure on Rutgers. Perry, nice pass from Campbell and rolls in. Don't see a lot of doubling. Rutgers handled that well that time, got it inside. Scarlet Knights by 10, 243. Levy got the position and Bells found him. Levy has nine, seven in the second half. A warning to leave the ball alone after it goes through. Big possession here. Princeton can get the ball back and score and make it a six-point game at around the two-minute mark. High ones. We could have a frantic finish. That wing forces that player to go towards the baseline. Scott going for the steal. Battle gets into the paint before the shot. Got a reaching foul on John Thompson. Shooting foul on the next Princeton foul. Rutgers will shoot the one and one. Now they change it. That is the seventh team foul. So it is the bonus situation. And battle will go to the line. He has not gone to the line yet this evening. He was seven of seven from the free throw line against Ryder. It's really probably the first time he put it on the floor more than one dribble. That time he put it down a couple times and took it inside. Al Menendez, head scout for the New Jersey Nets, told me that uh, his situation as far as looking ahead to pro basketball, be like a Steve Burt situation, where it's in the right situation. He can make it into the NBA. We'll have to go to a club that needs a small guard who can score. Burt out of Iona now with the Golden State Warriors who need lots of help. Battle second shot is long and Rutgers retains possession and that is large. Rutgers will take a timeout with 2.04 left, a nine point lead and 41 seconds on the shot clock. Tom Young wants to make sure here going down the wire as you pointed out it's only nine points now and he wants to make sure his team knows exactly what they're going to do. They don't panic especially against that pressing kind of defense. Rutgers basketball later in the month of December here at the Athletic Center. Both the men and women in action. Men, of course, also playing at the Meadowlands and Madison Square Garden. Lady Knights playing Seton Hall on December 20th at 7.30 and playing Fairfield on the 8th. This coming Saturday at 2 right here at the Rack. 
and then there are a couple of doubleheader opportunities where you can see both the men and the women next Wednesday night. And then on Saturday, December 15th, get the men and women playing an afternoon doubleheader starting at 2. Ticket information called 201-932-2766. And my thanks to the folks at Rutgers, Fred Grunninger, Tom Peters, Bud Heilman, Bob Smith, Bill Lynch, and the sports information staff. As we've had a good stay here at Rutgers Athletic Center for our first basketball game of the season on New Jersey Network. Tom Young and his staff, Joe Boyle and Art Perry and Gene Nieberlein, Eddie George. They can field the team. They got five of them there. Pretty good team, too. Tom would rather be on the golf course. Though. And Brown, same way. I think he traveled. I'll tell you what, I really feel that referee Jody Sylvester was watching to see if the ball was going to go out of bounds and battle uh, Brown, excuse me, did a little shuffle with his feet and perhaps got away with a walk. 61-59, the Rutgers women have defeated St. John's and the Rutgers men will look to duplicate that Sunday afternoon at four at the Meadowlands. 61-59, congratulations to Teresa Grintz and Scarlett Ladies. 135 left. 10 on the shot clock for Rutgers. And they'll have to work for it right here. Number 21, Dave Orlandini has checked in for the Tigers. Falling to the floor is battle. Sensational shot. You sounded like a coach then. You just yelled the battle. Work for it. He got the ball. Made a couple moves. What a great play. He has 19. Orlandini, number 21, a 6'2 freshman from Vineland in St. Augustine Prep. Levy is fouled. By battle. And Remley have been very impressive from the outside for the Scarlet Knights tonight. Tom Young's club with an 11 point lead and 110 to play. The next foul on Rutgers Princeton will go to the line. Orland Dini, all South Jersey high school player a year ago. Under a minute, 30 on the shot clock. Tigers have to hurry. Thompson, Smith will penetrate. Rejected clean by Perry. And here's Showtime battle. And he lost it. Sensational rejection by Steve Perry on the defensive end. Watch Perry. Really holds his feet well, doesn't go for those fakes. Well, we picked it up a little late. That's after the block. Ball came loose and battled, and he lost it. Princeton hurries it back down. Thompson's miss as we come back with 29 seconds left in 11 point Rutgers lead. Steve Brown wheeling with Orlandini. Remley, the battle. 20 seconds. The Scarlet Knights will go to 2 0 and await the Redmen from St. John's Sunday afternoon at 4 at the Meadowlands. The Tigers will fall of one and two, and they play Butch Van Bredikoff at Lafayette College Thursday night. Steve Brown, Smith goes to the floor looking for the steal. Darren Campbell. First point, John Battle with a total of 19. 16 points for Chris Remley to lead the Scarlet Knights. 35 of the 54 to Battle and Remley. Again, both shot very, very well. For Princeton, Joe Scott had 12 points to lead the way. Howard Levy with nine. Rutgers wins it by a final of 54 to 41. And we will be back to wrap it up for you right after these words. An evening of championship skating. Join skating stars Taller Cranston, Tiffany Chin. 
David Zandee and other world-class champions for an unforgettable evening of magic on the ice. Don't miss this exciting 15th anniversary evening of championship skating. That's Thursday, December 13th at 9 here on New Jersey Network. And interestingly, Dick, the 13-point margin, that's the largest lead of the ball game. And it was the final as Darren Campbell nailed it. John Battle with 19 and Chris Remley with 16, providing the offense for the Scarlet Knights. Both guys were very impressive. Princeton State zone the whole night. And Battle and Remley were able to hit consistently from the outside. I think that was the story. I think that was one of the big factors for Rutgers and the thing that Tom Young had to be pleased with. Their outside shooting last year was not real strong. With Battle and Remley tonight, they can they proved that they can shoot from the outside and it was the kind of ball game that I didn't feel that Rutgers was ever really in trouble. Princeton just had a very difficult time, had to rely on those perimeter shots, didn't get the ball inside consistently enough. What kind of team can Rutgers be this season? The team we saw tonight, again, minus Brian Ellerby, Ed Zucker, and Eric Riggins. Potential starters all. They'll be, of course, much deeper later in the year, but now they got to play St. John's, and those three guys will be out. That's going to be tough to play without those three players in there. I think Rutgers has a lot of potential. We talked last year. They needed that center. They got a big guy, Lloyd Moore. He's coming along a little bit. Well, why don't we ask the Speaking coach? about coming along here is Tom Young congratulations going, Tom on, a, you. on another victory you know you guys didn't have to worry about looking ahead past Princeton for St. John's because Princeton of course is the big rivalry in the state and there really wasn't that danger but now you have the rest of the week to prepare for St. John's and I was just asking Dick what he thought about it of course you'll still be without LRB Riggins and Zucker St. John's nationally ranked Chris Mullen and the highly touted Walter Berry. Congratulations on this win, though, Coach. Yeah, we like to we like to enjoy this. For, I told the players one hour. Okay. What time is it? All right, we'll check back in the about an hour. We gotta get into St. John's. But uh, I thought the kids played a good game. I really did, uh -huh. and uh, they were very patient. They got good shots defensively. They did a good job uh, in the zone and the man to man. So we come out of here. I thought it was, as I told them, it was it was a good prep game, really for St. John's because we have to play the same way. Mm -hmm. We can't go out and uh, and try and match them up and down the floor. So we have to get good shots. Uh, we have to D it up and uh, hope like heck we come out with this kind of performance. But obviously the talent difference is incredible. If we had our three regulars, you know, I'd like to have a good shot at Dick, it. Dick, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. You've got John Battle and Chris Remley right here. Well, we can talk about these two guys. Great job outside shooting. That's one of the things of last year, maybe up and down on that outside shooting. What was the difference tonight, or what was the difference over last year with that outside shooting? We'll start with Chris since he's closest. Okay. Uh, we better last year, or just, uh, I don't know. They uh, they really sagged in on Andre. They saw him, I guess, against Ryder. They knew that he had some moves inside and Lloyd. So they just gave it to us. And uh, tonight, I think we were smart. We really tried to get inside. When we couldn't, we had to open a uh, jump shot and we hit it. That's what I was saying up there, too. It was a smart ball club. John Battle, a little different player this year. Didn't put the ball on the floor a lot. Took some great jumpers. Well, it was a typical Princeton thing. And you know you can't get that many drives, so you have to be patient and take it like a little small jump or pass the side. Coach says you have one hour to enjoy it, so have a good time, then you get ready for St. John's. Good luck. All right, thanks, guys, and congratulations. Chris Remley and John Battle, again, those are the two guys who provided the offense for Rutgers. So for Dick Lloyd, this is Bill Perry. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Tom Young wanted to get back to his victorious locker room. We certainly understand that. Remember, Rutgers St. John's, 4 o'clock at the Meadowlands Sunday afternoon, preceded by two other ball games featuring New Jersey teams, Monmouth against St. Francis and FDU against LIU. Princeton back at it. Lafayette Thursday night against Butch Van Bredikoff. So Rutgers wins it 54 to 41. Good night, everybody.